Hi everybody, my name is Paolo Samicheli. I'm an Agile coach from Italy. And uh, I have a background in software. I worked in software for about 20 years. In the last two years, uh, I researched and worked in a field of Scrum applied to hardware, meaning physical products composed by some software, electronics, mechanical parts, and also plastics. In this case study, I will show you how I scale up uh, a Scrum for Hardware product development uses Scrum at scale. So the context, uh, it's uh, an Italian company uh, developing uh, um, a new product, a uh, next generation uh, house automation platform. And the project is still ongoing, so it's under NDA, I can name the, the company. And since the beginning, we had a very serious challenge. How to coordinate the many external suppliers building different parts of the platform and creating a lot of dependencies and constraints. So we started having the whole team aligned. We did a two-day liftoff, as described by Diana Larson in his book, in which we shared the vision, why we were doing this, and what was our mission. And also, we created the teams. We defined the working agreements, the definition of done, everything to set up a team. And then we created the, the first product backlog uh, doing a user story mapping. User story mapping was were covering all the uh, part of the platform. So we were including uh, software and uh, hardware uh, stories. Here is how we are organized. We have uh, uh, the headquarter teams, they are three teams. They are co-located in a single big room where they have everything they need to, to, to build the product. And they do uh, joint planning and joint review, and they have a separated daily scrum and also separated uh, uh, retrospective. So they have the daily scrum one after the other. After the three daily scrum, there is the scrum of scrum. After a while, uh, a fourth uh, team joined the, 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 the product development from a remote site, so it's still uh, an internal team, but it's not co-located, and they join uh, in, a, in a call at, at the scrum of scrum. The external supplier, the, we, we, we couldn't force the external supplier to use scrum, but we contracted to have their work uh, provided in a, in a uh, prioritized backlog with uh, priorities defined by a PO and for three out of the four external suppliers, their PO is a theme member. So the external supplier release the increment directly to the, the one of the equator teams that is responsible for the integration and for the uh, joint review. So basically in a joint review, we see everything internally and externally developed. Of the Meta Scrum, we, we, as I said, the problem is the, the, the high number of dependencies and constraints. So we have a very tight Meta Scrum. Just after the planning, the shift PO and the POs meets to check and reprioritize the remaining backlog. And uh, again, in the first week of the sprint, uh, they meet again to uh, reprioritize the story, creating new stories, deleting stories, splitting stories. Um, often some representative from the teams attend. In the second week uh, of the sprint, we have uh, the, the refinement for the uh, readiness. So many people from the team attend, and, and they try to get ready as much stories as possible. And normally, we have a two of these during the second week of, of the sprint. As I said, we, we have uh, joint planning. This meaning around uh, 18 people on the same room and some people remote. We started uh, uh, trying, uh, as we knew, with using the tool, projecting on the wall, and uh, making people to, to talk in turn. That was really boring, really, really slow, they didn't like that. 
So uh, I try to uh, invent a different way of doing planning using the metaphor of a buffet. You know, we Italians, we are very serious about the food. So <laughs> <laughs> I said, you have to behave like in a buffet party. You will find all the stories on the table. There are no chairs in a room. And uh, you can take too little or too much thing because th that wouldn't be polite. And you have to organize yourself. We end up having a very energetic and very, and very creative uh, meeting uh, in which people all from all the team collect and start discussing around the, the, the items they collect from, from the table. And in just one hour, we call the break. Every team share with the others what they have in their hands. And the product owner, the chief product owner checks is, uh, if in, in on the table that there is still some high priority item left. In that case, very rare, he asked to, to exchange with some other uh, uh, items. So uh, they asked the, uh, the team to volunteer exchanging the items, but this is quite rare. Uh, and then we, 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 we've done with Spring Planning 1. So the team split and they do the Spring Planning 2 in uh, uh, is, um, analyzing the, the, the single stories and creating the task. So and we are very happy about this, this, uh, this format because it's, uh, it's, it's something that it's, uh, uh, I wouldn't say funny, but it's very energetic. Also, we have the joint review. So uh, I asked explicitly to, to the management before starting to have a, a dedicated room in which the, the theme could uh, integrate often during the sprint the increments. So we have this room that it's uh, basically our continuous integration platform. And also it's the place where we have the, the review. You know, in a house automation, the review are very, are very interactive. So you see lights turning on, alarm going on, uh, uh, windows opening, closing, so things like that. In this photo, you can see the new product because it has been taken in, at the beginning uh, in the, uh, of the development. And what you can see, it's an uh, empty panel, Th those panel uh, are um, uh, equipped with wheels, so the, the team can even take it during the sprint to take room for convenience and take it back to the, 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 the review room for, for, for the review. So, results. We are measuring the uh, cumulative uh, velocity for the quarter teams because since every team released to them, it's a good indicator of how the project is uh, proceeding and also we used the yesterday weather pattern. I learned it from Joe Justice and Dr. Sutherland and it's an, a very effective way to, to, to make team to go faster and uh, in around the one year we have uh, an increasing velocity of nine times faster and those teams are still accelerating so we have around six eight months more development uh, let's see how fast they go and they are very, uh, this definition of high productive uh, team because they are very noisy, they are very happy and they work very hard. So, question. Yeah, Paolo, sounds great. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to, uh, refer, referring back to the first diagram, uh, how did the relationship evolve between the internal product owners and the external teams? Was it, was it bumpy at all? Did they, was it a seamless, uh, Coordination. Yeah, the, the the coordination was quite quite good because the the product owner they were um, senior developers, so they were speaking to the external team in the same language, and also the external team, the prioritization is not really a prioritization per value; is based on on more on constraints. The the, the, the real pr uh, pro product ownership is for 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 the the. The, this, the e quarter teams. So mm, I don't, I'm not aware of about any kind of complex, conflicts. There is a real uh, cooperation uh, and uh, trying to get things done. Was <coughs> you mentioned that they didn't do Scrum on the external teams. Do you think it would be, do you think in the future it would be interesting as an experiment to try to propose that the external teams come in, witness how the internal teams work and attempt to adopt that uh, framework of working? Yeah, in, in reality, uh, we have one external supplier we, we, that is uh, providing two, two teams to, to the, the, the product development. They started uh, after a while doing real scrum. And uh, the other one, they, 
they weren't doing, they, they are not doing a scrime by, by the book because, but basically they, they, they are releasing in one piece flow, they get a prioritized backlog, uh, they get feedback every two weeks, uh, so I, uh, uh, in a so I think the, the, more the important part are, are, are there, and probably after this experience uh, they will start uh, using Scrum even for their uh, internal uh, projects. For sure. at, at the sprint reviews, are right now with the sprint reviews, it's only internal or do you have potential external customers coming to the reviews? Mm, yeah, yeah, we, we, we do have uh, stakeholders. So we have people from, uh, uh, from uh, still from the company, so it's not public yet, the product. So, but there are, there are people, uh, stakeholders, there are stakeholders, so people from outside the development uh, circle to attend the, 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 the review and see how things are going and seeing the products that is working in some way and providing feedback. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. Anyone thank else? You. On the buffet style planning, um, how did you have any issues with teams saying that the stories weren't ready since they weren't actually doing the refinement on those stories in preparation to make them ready, ready for sprint planning? Uh, no, w w the, the story are normally already also because we tend to to have a story ready is uh, one sprint ahead. So basically, in the current sprint uh, you work on stories not for the next sprint but the, the sprint after. Also because if you to the, the external supplier needs some time in ad in, a, in advance to to start some development. So yeah, mm, no, we don't have um, many issues. Sometimes it happen, but um, it's it's quite rare. I mean, it's not. Was it that were other teams maybe getting the acceptance criteria and the stories ready, and then a different team would maybe pull it for during that buffet style planning. No, I haven't no. got the request. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> In other words, who was making the stories into a ready state if the teams weren't breaking it down the, themselves? No, the, the, the team itself makes makes the story. The, in, uh, the, the, we have four refinements. The, the first two are prioritization, so they are only a uh, small representative. The second two, there is a very big representative for all the themes making the story ready. We use a, a, um, a technique called the triple nickel. So basically, in a big table, we put the, the story, everybody put notes uh, at the uh, criteria, and then we pass it on. So after the, the story has passed, uh, got some uh, green sticker, means for me it's ready. After a few stickers, it's put on the center, and that's it ready, yeah. I see a really nice jump between Sprint 7 and Sprint 9 on the chart that you have on the screen. I was wondering if you could share some of the things that you did or focused on uh, with those particular sprints. Between Sprint 7 and Sprint 9, yeah, that, that's the hardware. Meaning when, when you don't have a, a, a decent part of the architecture, you are very slow. When you have uh, the, 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 the working skeleton, then you really, uh, really go faster. So this is more contextual. It's not uh, for 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 the team itself. The 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 team accelerated after sprint 19. So you see that uh, at sprint 17 you go down because that is summer. Uh, you know, in Italy, uh, summer is <laughs> it's quite uh, <laughs> it's quite serious. After on September, they started accelerating because I think it's, it's the magic of Scrum, the feedback loop, uh, people learn. So having joint planning, joint, uh, joint review, people learn, learn from each other, and, and so you get faster. So one of the things that helped us accelerate was the prototypes being delivered that then you could increase the amount of work exactly. that you did. Exactly. So a lot of this, in other words, for, as a recommendation for hardware people who are watching this, is an understanding that you'll see greater velocity acceleration once your, once your procurement process essentially provides the things that you need. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the beginning, in comparing to software, harder in the beginning there is a, a, a slower curve because when, un, until you have the, 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 the first working product, uh, working skeleton is hard, but then you can, if you work well uh, uh, with the, the things we know about Scrum for Hardware, like modularity and clear, uh, non-stable interface, things like that, uh, then you can accelerate it just like a software, de software development team. Great.